Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to take a look at why the main method is static and also at the other keywords that there are in the main method. Public, void, main, string, and args, and what they mean and why they're there. So the first thing I'm going to do in order to show you how this goes, I'm going to create a new Java project here. Um, I'm going to call it my project. doesn't really matter what you call it. And in this project, I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call this class main. It doesn't matter what you call it. As I said, I'm going to put a public static void main in it. And as I've explained before, what this is going to do is it's going to tell Java that our program can start at this class. And I'm going to explain exactly what that means in a moment. So if I add a new class, that is, for example, a person. And I do not put a main method here. Then we agree that if I press run, this hello world is going to print out. And it's down there. And this is because Java knows that it has to execute this main method. Even though it has two different classes, it knows that person.java doesn't have anything interesting in it. And the main method is what it has to execute. So it goes and finds this class, doesn't matter what it's called, but it has a main method. So it goes and runs that. And what happens if I put a main method here? and then I press run. If I manage to. Okay, and this is what happens when I run my project and not to one specific class, but both of them have a main method. It asks me which one I wanna run because I could run either of them, but not both. Both of them have main methods, so I have to choose and if I run this one, I see person printed out here. And then if I go to my run icon here at the top left, we can see that I can run either main or person. And if I run main, I get hello world. If I run person, I get person question mark. Okay, so that's that out of the way. So why is it static? The reason for it being static is the following. If I have, let's not go in the main class, sorry. Let's go in the person class. If in the person class I have, um, a constructor, which I explain in my other programming videos what a constructor is. Um, a constructor is essentially a piece of code that runs when you instantiate the class. So if I was going to create an object of type person, um, then in this constructor I could run some initialization uh, code. So, and the thing in Java is you can overload constructors. And overloading constructors means that you cannot have two constructors that are the same, but you can have two constructors with deferring parameters. So for example, here we have three constructors. Notice it's a constructor because it has the same name as the class and also it has no return type. There's no void or boolean or string there. Uh, so for example, the main is void. The constructor doesn't have any return type. So we have three constructors, a person with no parameters, a person where we specify the age of the person when we create the object, and a person where we specify the age and the name of the person when we create the object. So if we run the main method, we do not want to execute the constructor because we're not instantiating a person, but Java needs to know that no matter which constructor we run, the main method is always going to be the same. And that's what static means. Static means that it doesn't matter if the person we, uh, we execute has an age and a name, or just an age, or neither of them, the main method is always going to be the same. So essentially, the definition for static is that it 
comes from a type and not an object. So a class and not an object. And therefore, if we do something like this, int private int age, and then in this constructor we say this age equals age. And then I try to do public static void print age. That's fine. But now if I try to get this age, it'll tell me cannot use this in a static context because this being static it cannot get the current object whose uh, age this this value belongs to. So static means it's okay for the class and non-static means it's okay for the object. So we can do this and if we put static here we cannot do this because cannot use this. So that's kind of what static means. Static means this is a part of the class and it cannot use any of the instance variables. If you instantiate this object, that method or that value belongs to the whole class and not to only uh, one object. So it's kind of difficult to wrap your head around that um, but then if you wanted to get the printage method for a specific object, you would have to create a new person object and give it the age, and then you could do p dot print age. If print age were static, and we printed something completely different, like just a number, then p dot print age tells us that the static method print age from the type person should be accessed in a static way which means that instead of doing p dot print age we should be doing person dot print age because print age belongs to the type person the class person and not one specific instance or one specific object of type person so that's what static means and that's why the main method is static because when you run the Java program even though the main method is in a class you don't want to be instantiating a class because Java wouldn't know which of these constructors to use if they were overloaded. So it is a, quite a convoluted uh, reason but that is the reason why it's static. The reason why it's public is a bit more difficult. Um, one could argue is simply so that the Java could read it, but really um, Java should be able to read it anyway because it's what's running this program, so uh, I haven't really found a reason why it's public. It's probably just convention. The reason why it's void is because this main method is um, going to run and then it's going to finish, and, you're not, and when it finishes you're not going to be able to get anything from it because at the end of the main method your program ends, so you, you, there's really no reason to get to return a value because you're not going to be able to use it. The reason why it's main is because before Java, uh, C and C++ programs were usually started at the main method. So it made sense to call the Java start of the program also main. Uh, that's simply a convention. And the reason why it's strings and then two um, square brackets and then args is because when you execute a Java program in the console, you can specify some parameters, uh, such as, for example, the file that you're going to read in your program and that file could be specified in args 0. It's an array. And args 0 could hold a value that you've given the Java program through the command line. We've never used those before in, in this YouTube channel, uh, but they are used very often when you run your Java program through the console. So that's why the main method is public, static, void. It's called main, and why has the string args behind it. Hopefully this was not too difficult to understand. Just remember that static means it is belonging to a type and not an instance. And when you instantiate that instance, then you can use the instance name and the non-static methods of it. However, Java does let you do this.
this works to call a uh, sorry that was uh, my bad Java does let you instantiate an object and then call a static method of that object however it is not recommended to do that um, for reasons that I'm not going to explain in this video but there you go so hopefully that was um, insightful and hopefully you understood what that means and I'll see you in the next video